Hey guys, Gassy TV here with another video today. We're going to be talking about the new Penance brand shown here. Penance brand. Um, there's a few problems with this. Uh, first off, the ability not being in the POB that I'm going to show you, but we've been uh, calculating and doing some tests with it and talking about its mechanics. I'm going to quickly go through how it's going to work. Basically, you can attach with Rune Binder two brands on an enemy, and the duration uh, of the actual brand is six seconds base. And when it's attached to an enemy, it will only be attached for 2.5 seconds, during which the activation frequency will add pulses of energy. These pulses uh, will obviously do its normal damage, and at 20 stacks, instead of uh, adding more energy, it will just keep doing an AoE pulse damage. So once you reach 20 stacks, that's great. And when a brand is detached from an enemy, it will then explode whatever amount of energy is on that enemy. Um, so there's a lot of issues with this because the 0 0.5 activation uh, on a base of 2.5 seconds doesn't give you that much. It gives you five pulses on two brands that will be uh, nine because you have to cast the other one as well. And the first one explode and that will consume all the energy. So there's a lot of mechanics around this, I'm not going to go through all of it. Uh, but basically the problem that would occur with this mechanic is that if you cast a Penance Brand on a pack of enemy, um, the pulses are not going to hit everything, right? And you kind of want to have some sort of AoE explosion to make sure that it kills everything, right? So there's a few problems with that. And the, that is that it would either have to spend its entirety of duration in this case unaffected scaling would be two and a half seconds and then it would explode everything in that pack so to say or you could use brand recall which now has a huge cooldown or you could use um over summoning uh, your brands elsewhere to remove the oldest one to make create this explosion or you could use swift brand support which is a 64 percent more activation frequency but it has a 65 percent less duration which would bring the Penance Brand down to have a duration of 0 0.875 seconds. That means that it would be really, really smooth to level with. You throw a Brand out, like a self-casted ability, you move to the next pack and you throw it out, and before a second has gone, that pack should theoretically be dead, depending on how you're scaling the gear and everything, of course. So the problem with that, of course, is when you get to a boss, you smack out two Brands, and they'll ramp up their... Uh, their pulses and then the first one will consume all of the explosions very very fast and then uh, attach the new brand if you have one placed under the boss so the first explosion will be pretty good damage but after that the explosions from each brand being detached from the enemy would then result in a uh, very small explosion damage or much smaller explosion damage making swift brand not so good for a single target so the way we're going to be bypassing this this wonky mechanic is actually through a cluster jewel uh, where we are taking a medium cluster jewel called uh, node called Holy Conquest. This makes Branch uh, attach to a new a a enemy each time they activate uh, every 0 0.3 seconds. So versus a boss with no other adds, like Awakener for example, it won't actually detach and you would actually be in a situation where the brand would allow to build up the pulses and when the brand is expired it will then do the 20 pulse explosion and you would attach a new brand to it but versus clearing, it would literally just explode every 0 0.3 seconds. It would consume those pulses and explode on your back, allowing you not to need um, Swift Brand support. So that's where we're going to go away from and scale the duration a little bit. So the result would then be that the Holy Conquest will actually make sure that the a pack would explode and the brand would then move. So if the, anything in the pack would actually survive, your brand is still being attached to a new enemy in that pack, making sure that that pack will actually die thanks to Holy Conquest. So this is basically salvaging the entirety of that mechanic. Um, and the duration nodes you can get that are very easy to achieve uh, is located... Where is it? I think it was a little bit here, right? Brand skills have 15% duration going towards Runebinder. You have the brand equity on the north side of it, giving you 50%, or you can get the potency of will, which is 45%. So this is designed using a Hierophant Templar, uh, going with Divine Guidance for Man of a Matter, and also just Figuration of Mind and Extra Mana, Conviction of Power, Illuminated Devotion, as well as Arcane Blessing. And the idea with this is to actually utilize Archmage for this approach, because you're doing so much damage already with it, and we want to convert the damage into Lightning, because other nodes that we'll be abusing in the Cluster Jewels approach would be to go for uh, Vengeful Commander, Scaling Wrath. Now, we don't want Wrath to consume too much of our unreserved mana, so this is easily done through an Essence Worm, 
allowing us to remove the mana cost or the mana reservation cost for that specific um, approach. In the PUB linked in the description, there's also a Voidbringer, which I've manually added the update for 3.11, which gives 80 plus flat mana cost to skills uh, to bring the mana cost of this Archmage a penance brand up to 832. Now in the PUB here, it's being used uh, with Stormbrand because they have a similar activation frequency as well as uh, cast time. So I decided to just use Stormbrand as a placeholder where we're using Arcing Surge, Archmage, Fist of Lightning to further scale the lightning damage, but also convert the remaining fist damage the build ha or the ability has into lightning, cock effect and lightning penetration. Um, another small detail with this is that we're using Malachi's Artifice. The reason we're doing this is to freely allow us to Elemental Equilibrium enemies. This is something that's very commonly abused in minor builds, and we're going to do that with this approach as well, where we're using a Flame Golem. This allows you to still have added flat damage sources to your spells, because that does not affect the Golem, but does scale your Penance brand, and allows you to actually make sure that you do not get any added Lightning Damage to your Golem. Um, and the good thing with the Wrath, for example, is that this gives you lightning damage to uh, attacks, which would affect the Golem. But the Flame Golem is casting spells, and the spell increase from Wrath is increased by the lightning damage, which means that the Golem would still only do fire damage, allowing you to apply uh, fire damage, Elemental Equilibrium, to further skyrocket the lightning damage provided by Archmage. And since it gets so much flat, I did decide to pick up Divine Judgment for this. We have no idea how this is going to feel when it comes to leveling. We have no idea how about uh, how it's going to work with the end game availability. But since you are playing a Templar, there are quite a few builds out there that you can respec into in case this would turn out to be really shitty. Show gameplay. Yeah, it's a bit hard. Just a note again. This is recorded before the league release. Uh, so basically, the build is going in, uh, going out from the Templar to pick up the discipline training, Holy Dominion, Light of Divinity. Anointed Flash is too good of a node to give up on because of the resistance provided, but also the maximum resistance. Quick recovery for life and mana region. We do pick up Forethought for the increased mana and increased mana cost of skills. Duration, as I mentioned before, and we pick up Dynamo. There is a little bit of a mechanic through Agnostic where you could support your, your main ability with a level 1 Blood Magic, making it cost a shitload of mana. But because of Blood Magic, it would then cost your, uh, your life nodes. Sorry, life instead of mana. And you can use Enduring Cry, for example, and together with Dynamo, actually keep yourself somewhat safe. I feel that this is a bit risky, so I don't want to do that wonky mechanic, but it is a possibility if you'd like it. Uh, we don't need Mind of a Matter if you choose to run with Cloak of Defiance. And um, we pick up Elemental Overload. Cluster Jewel, like I mentioned, is kind of crucial for this build to work. Arcanist Dominion into Lightning Walker for further scaling your Lightning Damage. A little bit of crit to go out here to make sure you get that Elemental Overload proccing. Uh, Life and Mana into Deep Wisdom to give you Arcane Will. And as you can see here, we don't have weapons, shields, helmets, boosts. Uh, you know, there's barely any gear available here. Not all sockets are sorted. For example, Fever Mind was going to be there with the updated version of it. And what the result is with this is that you get a buffer of a lot of Energy Shield. Even without the gear, uh, you only have 2.9k life and 3.6k mana. And even with those low numbers, the energy shield is already up on 800 energy shield. So this is actually a really nice uh, point of um, interest for you to pick up as you're going to get a bit of mana. Mana region, mana recovery from flask and also a bit of a buffer on your energy shield. So if you get about 5,000 energy life, you can get uh, about eight to 9,000 effective HP plus another 1,000 to 2,000 energy shield. So you get very tanky with this approach. Obviously, we take up Mystic Bulwark, a little bit of blocking by mana region and mana, and also Protocol Perfection to give us that 40% increased spell then, because we can have so much mana, which also provides us with mana. Deep Thoughts is a no-brainer, cruel preparation for life and rest. And over here, we take Purity Flesh for next to Chaos Rest, Arcane Capacity to scale our Arcane Surge, Runebinder is obvious, something you want to go for as fast as you can if you're going to level with Brands, and Divine Judgment to further scale the flat energy, sorry, flat lightning damage. And of course, Devotion. So this is basically a thrown together approach that I think would work very well with Penance Brand. But again, it's very hard to tell prior to the, to the actual release of the um, gem in PUB as well as in game to see how it works. I do believe that this should work pretty well. If it doesn't, Hero Fence has a lot of options for different builds. Anything ranging from other brand abilities to, or well, Arcanist Brand as well for those who want to try that out. All the way to doing totem builds, whatnot. Frostbolt totems is going to be crazy now with the update as well. 
And uh, that's basically all the mechanics that I have sorted for the, uh, the build. Quick note on the chest pieces and whatnot on the gear. You could use anything like in Pulsa to further scale explosion damage. I don't think it's going to be needed, but you can if you want to. Though you will have to spec into Minor Matter if you remove Cloak of Defiance. Uh, weapon, spell damage with uh, flat mana. Really easy to get and something you would be going for. You can dual wield it or you can get a shield, a helmet, anything from inward to a rare helmet, boots, rare, amulet, rare. Belt, stitch and vice, get some mana recovery and all those things as well. There's, there's so many options that you can do in terms of gear. It's very generic, similar to how the Archmage Stormbrand build has been played during Delirium League. And that's basically all I have to say. We're going to be continuing creating more builds. And uh, good luck to everyone in Harvest League coming up in a um, little over 24 hours from the recording of this video. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below what you guys think about Penis Brand. Until next time, stay safe, keep rocking.